Okay, so here's my model of Ben Eater's 8-bit computer in Logisim. Um, I've added the jump conditional instruction, which he hasn't gotten to yet in his 43rd video, which should be coming out soon, as an instruction that uh, causes the program counter to jump to the desired index only if the sign bit in the A register is a high. Um, so it's effectively a jump less than zero instruction that then goes to that index. And I've written the program to multiply two numbers here. Um, because we don't have in other instructions, I could have added them, but I chose not to, to do it within the constraints of what Ben's already done. Um, it will overwrite the user inputs down here. It takes two arguments, say three and five. The first argument will be left alone. The second argument gets overwritten as I decrement it by one until it uh, dips below zero and will cause the program to do a conditional jump and exit out and output the product of the two numbers to the output register. So going over this program real quick, we are simply uh, taking two arguments from memory indices three and five, and we're putting the first one in, uh, sorry, the second one in the memory, the five, and then we're subtracting one from it and putting it back where it belongs, and then looking at uh, what's in our A register then at that time, and if it's uh, less than zero, we're going to want to jump to the output instructions, which is down here at uh, memory index 8, where we load the result, and then output it, and halt. And if it's not, then we're going to want to load the current result, add the first argument to it, store it again, and then we jump back and just keep doing this, so we do the repetitive addition to get the multiplication. Um, now with the model in Logisim, it, it is possible to interact with this directly and switch this from run mode and program mode, put it in run mode, and we could take, say, this first instruction here, which goes in 0, and is load a f, so that's an ox1f instruction. And we can go in here and put in a 1, and then an argument of an f, and hit this load key and manually load that byte and do this for everyone like we have to do on the physical version. Or, because this is Logisim, I can even just put this in run mode and edit contents of this RAM and just type in these hex bytes for all these instructions over here. So I'm just going to do that because that is a lot easier than inputting this all in binary. Um, and then we'll put in the arguments, which is the constant 1 that we'll need for subtraction. The result is a 0 to start, and then 3 times 5. And we'll just close that out. So we take this and we can just go ahead and step through this a little bit first. So we step through, first thing it does, it grabs the 5 and puts it in the A register, and then it's going to uh, go 3C, which grabs the 1, and the 3 is a subtract instruction, so it's going to put 1 in the B register, set the subtract flag true, subtract 1, and get a 4 there. It's going to take that ALU result, now it's going to put it in the A register. So we now got a 4 there. Um, and then it's going to put that in the location of the second argument, overwriting it and decrementing it by one. Uh, then we go to the conditional jump instruction, which looks at the sign flag here. This is still greater than zero, so it does nothing. We continue our execution. And now this is going to load the, the three, which is the first argument, and we're going to then add, sorry, the, the D, it loads the zero. Uh, then we're going to grab the three, and we're going to add that to that once, and then store it from the A register back into that result location in memory. Um, then we jump back to the start and we do this again. So subtracting one from the second argument, it's still gonna end up being greater than zero. So we're gonna go back into our loop and do the rest of that. So I'm just gonna let this uh, cycle through here and we can watch it increment our result by three until the second argument reaches a zero. See, it's going pretty slow. I think I have the clock going at something like 4 or 8 hertz, and uh, not exactly a modern machine. So coming up on uh, 12 here. So there's 12. And we got one more time through. 
and I think we'll manually step through this last bit here. So this got to be a zero, and now we're going to do our conditional jump. We're going through one more time, and we add it, we get an F, and now 1F comes in, grabs this, we go 3C, we're going to subtract the locate the value in C, which is a 1 from the 0 in the A register, and we get a minus 1 in 2's complement, which is all 8 bits true, so if we negated all of them, they'd be all zeros and added 1, so that would be a 1 if we negated it, so that makes us a minus 1. This minus 1 has the flag set here, which goes to our jump conditional, and this is going to cause a jump when we uh, go and execute a conditional jump, and this conditional jump will bring us down here to grabbing from memory that that 0f right there, and then we take this 0f, which is a 15, and we're going to output it to the output register, and then halt the computer, and you can see that the halt control signal has come on. So we've multiplied two numbers, but destroyed these memory indices here and here. So if we wanted to multiply two other numbers, we just go in here, make sure we zero out the result. Um, and then let's say we want like uh, 8 times 6, which will be 48. Uh, that's going to take a while, uh, especially since it's the clock speed is so slow. So we can change that. Bring it up to maybe like uh, 64 hertz and go ahead and let that run through this program. Hit the reset switch here and let it run. Just give it a couple seconds, see it's getting up there. Almost there. And you can see we got the right result 48. Now, I didn't time that, but I think I, I entered that as 8 times 6. Maybe I should do something a little bit more extreme. But with this algorithm, it's it's worth noting that a times b is not necessarily as fast as b times a. So if we do one times like uh, let's just do hex twenty one times thirty two, so that's going to be thirty two. This is going to be pretty slow. Uh, so if we let let this run, go ahead and hit. Sorry, I didn't zero out the result register. So we got to zero out the result register here. We're going to do one, to 1 times 20. And let that go. And 1 times 20, it's really working hard. It's getting there. It's hex 20. It's worth noting. It's really taking a long time because it's got to count up by 1 all the way to 32 in decimal. But uh, it will eventually go ahead and get the right answer. Might even want to crank this up a little bit. Getting there. And there we are. Uh, 1 times one times 20. That that doesn't look right. Did I, did I enter 20? If we entered hex 1 times hex 20 should be 32. Uh, let's go ahead and run that again. Reset this. That all looks good. We got a problem. We got a 1 there and a 20 there and our 1 for decrementing. And we're going to run that. Let it go. And it's cranking out numbers. Yeah, 32. I, I, I guess I let it run partially and the memory got overwritten. I'm sure when you point that out in the comments. So that's a, that took a very long time. So this is not not a very efficient way to multiply two numbers. And some of you are probably thinking if I do 20 times 1, that's going to be a much better decision on my part because now I have the clock turned a lot up a lot from the first time. But if we let this, this run right here, basically instant because it only has to do one iteration instead of 32 to do that multiplication. So if you're using this, you want to multiply the greater number times the lesser, not the lesser times the greater. Well, there you have it. There's my implementation of Ben Eater's design in Logisim and it running the multiplication program with the conditional jump instruction as a jump less than zero. Uh, if you like what you saw, please do give a like, uh, maybe even subscribe. I plan on making some more videos about this, especially the physical breadboard implementation that I have at home. But, uh, you know... Everybody's got a job, I got a school.